You are enough. You are enough. It doesn't matter if we don't always get paid the same. It doesn't matter that we get overlooked by others at times. You know what you have and set a goal and then just do it. Welcome to the One Girl Revolution podcast. I'm your host, Kate Bryan. If you're new here, please make sure that you subscribe to the One Girl Revolution podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at One Girl Revo. That's the number one girl, R-E-V-O, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can find all of our social media links, our podcast episodes, and our original documentary series, and so much more on our website at OneGirlRevolution.com. That's the number one girl, Revolution.com. I am really excited to welcome Kimberly Willis to the One Girl Revolution podcast today. Kimberly is a cancer survivor, thriver, and advocate. She's also an author and host and founder of Survivor's Corner. Kimberly herself was diagnosed with breast cancer at 34 years old. Kimberly didn't have the gene for it, nor did it run in her family. So in many ways, it was shocking that she had it. Cancer for so many people is an absolute shock, a slap in the face. I know it was for my mom and for my family. And honestly, I feel like we're still working through it all, working through everything we've experienced over the past weeks and months and still processing it all. Now, I don't want this podcast to turn into a show all about cancer or all about my family or my mom or my mom's cancer journey, but I'm covering this because it's relevant. It's obviously relevant to my own life and to the One Girl Revolution community since I've had my mom on, but it's also Cancer Awareness Month, and I want to share inspiring and incredible stories with you about cancer this month. So here you go. Kimberly is an absolute queen, and I can't wait for you to get to know her and hear her story and to hear all about her incredible work with people currently walking with cancer, survivors, and thrivers. In this episode, you will get to know Kimberly and hear about her own cancer journey. You will hear about her husband's cancer journey, as well as her parents and so many others that she loves and knows and has walked with. You will hear about Survivor's Corner and the incredible work that Kimberly does with people walking with cancer, survivors, and thrivers. You'll be absolutely blown away by Kimberly's own survivor's journey, and I know that her story and her life will inspire you. It will blow you away, and I'm just so excited to share her life and her story with you. So without further ado, here's Kimberly. Kimberly, welcome to the One Girl Revolution podcast. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you here, and there's so much that I want to cover about your own life, your own journey, your books, your podcast, all the different things. But before we get into that, I would love to know from you, who is a one girl revolution in your life? Who's a woman or girl that's inspired you? Well, I am the youngest of six siblings. So I would say that my mother is my hero because Uh, As a mother, you're a superhero. You are taking care of your children. You're taking care of the house and um, still trying to have a life of your own. It's like, like mom is like the superhero. So yes, I would say that if I could have another person, I would say um, first ladies of churches. The reason why I say that is because they constantly pray for people uh, and they still have their duties as mothers, as wives and things like that. So um, my mom, but then also to first ladies as well. Well, and you're a first lady, right? (laughs) Yes, I am. What's that experience like for you? Oh, it's, you know what? It it is amazing. And it's a lot (laughs) at the same time, because, you know, our first ministry is to really make sure that we are covering our husband if it's in prayer and things like that, because he gets phone calls at all times of the day. Um, Sometimes I get phone calls as well, depending on, you know, who they end up reaching first. So it's a lot to deal with, but it's yet rewarding because the lives that we're able to impact is like the greatest feeling ever. And just to know that I had a hand in it, that, you know, God has allowed me to be able to impact others' lives in a positive way is amazing. I'm honored. 
That's incredible. Well, you're just such a light, such a beacon of light. And I know to so many people, and I think in this day and age where there's this epidemic of loneliness, community is so important. And so however people find that, whether that's in churches or in their own um, neighborhoods and communities, it's just so important. And I know that you and your husband have created that um, at your church. And so it's just incredible to see that. So I want to rewind um, because I'm always interested in people's evolution story, you know, who they are, where they're from, Mm -hmm. a little bit about their upbringing, because I think that there are so many facets of our lives. Of course, we're ever growing and sometimes Mm -hmm. things can be thrown in our path that we are never anticipating. But a lot of things that we go through and experience, there's almost like these little footprints from are growing up, um, that kind of lead us on our way and turn us into the people that we are. So I would love to rewind and just talk yeah. a little bit about, I'd love to hear a little bit about your story, who you are, where you're from, and just a little bit about your upbringing. Yes. Well, I like to introduce myself is your sister, friend and home girl, <laughs> so, because I really feel like I can relate to a lot of people with the different things that has happened in my life um, from being 10 years old to almost committing suicide because of different things that was happening within my household that wasn't necessarily positive to growing up to what I am in today as a warrior. I felt like um Someone said yesterday in my podcast and the color purple, you know, she said, all my life I had to fight. And that's what I feel like, (laughs) you know, I've I've been fighting ever since um, I've been born. And recently, five years ago, I had one of the biggest fights of my life. I was diagnosed with stage three breast cancer at the age of 34. Doesn't run in my family. I don't have the gene it didn't make sense. (laughs) I'm like, I don't understand why I had that. And I uh, found it by self-detection. And with this being October and uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, to all my pink sisters, it's so important to make sure that you are in tune with your body to know if something is off so you could go see about it. And don't put it off because I put it off. And the reason why I put it off, because of everything that I had going on, my husband had just started pastoring at this moment. Um, I had a career at the credit union as a branch manager, and I felt I felt this lump. My grandmother had passed away the month that I found the lump. So I was grieving all at the same time. And I'm like, you know, if you work in corporate, sometimes we have to do more with less. And as a manager, I had to, you know, make sure the operations of the branch was operating. And, you know, if everyone else is calling off, you can't call off either. You know, you have to, you got to get there. So I kept putting off my appointment. So I felt it say fast forward to late April. And I was like, you know what? I got to get this checked out. So I finally set the appointment um, early May and I uh, had to do some biopsies and things like that. And in May, that's when I was diagnosed with that. So with having stage three, that means that it has spread beyond the breast. So that means I had to have six, uh, 16 rounds of chemo. I completed 15, six weeks of radiation and several surgeries. Mind you, my children at the age, I have four children, 11, 10, uh, I think four and one at the time. So I had young babies trying to figure this out. And I had to learn how to fight for my life um, and to do it with such a grace because we wanted to be private at the time just to help shield our children and things like that. And we didn't come open. My husband and I decided to come open about my journey until after I finished chemotherapy. And I really wanted to come open about uh, to come open about that because it was very important to me to share light and hope. But my story doesn't stop there, unfortunately. When I was getting ready to start chemotherapy, my father's bladder cancer came back. Uh, He had it five years prior and it came back and he decided he didn't want to have treatment. So now I'm dealing with my own chemotherapy. I'm trying to take care of my small children. I have the responsibility of the church and I'm taking a hiatus from my job. And now I have to deal with my terminal father. And fast forward, he passed away. Uh, just before I started radiation. But then after his funeral, guess what? My mother gets diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. And I'm like, okay, God, what's going on? I, you know, I'm fighting for my life. I'm trying to stay positive. I'm trying to do all these things, but all of this distraction is in my way. 
So I just prayed. I said, God, I just want your will to be done. Give me the strength and the grace to be able to go through this season. I trust you and whatever that it is. Well, God saw fit to call my mom home 82 days later after my father. And in this process, that's how my first book came. Because I we have this thing, what I call a spiritual amnesia, to where we forget different things that we have been brought out of. We all have been part of a bad breakup, <laughs> you know, and different things like that. And we thought the world was going to end. And I wanted to capture something that was able to be a reminder for me. But then, you know, I realized the light bulb went off. Other people need encouragement too. So, you know, I allowed my story to go on paper to be able to help encourage others. So to deal with the grief, to deal with the grief of my my breasts and my body, as well as dealing with everything that I was going through, that's just a short synopsis of, of what I've went through. Yeah. Well, you've been through so much and just like you shared, there are so many, and I think all of us probably have these moments in our lives where you survive something, even in our childhood. If we look back a lot of times, like you said, we block it out and we don't want to remember it. Um, it's traumatic. It's a trauma, but Mm -hmm. there are moments also where it's like, you feel like the whole world is, is collapsing on top of you. And I'm sure that you felt that when you were diagnosed with cancer and then it just kept getting piled on and piled on with your mm-hmm. dad and your mom, how did you, how did you find the hope or the perseverance to continue on through those really difficult moments, those darkest moments? So a few things, prayer first and foremost, um, I will not be where I am today if it wasn't for the grace of God. I know everyone has a different belief system and and I respect that. But for me, I know that that has been instrumental because when you are going through cancer and you're trying to make it, you are trying to fight for your life. (laughs) You're trying to fight for your life so your family could still love on you and everything that's attached with you. You're just trying to survive survive and keep your sanity during this because it's so easy to fall into a depression. Uh, We just um, came out of um, suicide uh, prevention month as well as mental health um, awareness month. And it's so easy when you are diagnosed with cancer, especially when you're in the later stages to fall into depression because of how chemo and all these other things. And some of the drugs that you take can sometimes add on to the depression. So not only naturally you're dealing with it because of what's going on in your life, but then medically you're also fighting that as well. One drug that I'm on, I have to take for 10 years. So that's something that's a continuous for me that I have to continue to um, make sure that I um, see, I seek therapy and, and then also I seek prayer. But then also it's so important to have a support system and to figure out who is in your corner and you need to stick with those because you have a fight and flight also with the people that's around you. When you're going through difficult times, sometimes you will find that people um, start to shy away because they can't handle all of the adversity and, and the difficultness that's going on in your life. And you got those who are just ready to go in the trenches with you. They're ready to put on those boxing gloves and they're ready to go to war with you. That's who you need in your corner. I cannot stress that enough. Those people who are ready to put those boxing gloves Keep them in your corner so those times that you're crying and you're unable to pray for yourself because there's moments sometimes you can't even speak. That's the time where you then have to have those people to help you. But then also give those who were unable to be in your corner, give them some grace because sometimes people are just unable to handle certain things. And just just know where they stand. That, that doesn't mean that they don't love you and things like that, but they just couldn't handle what was going on. But those who are in the fight, you need that. So you need your uh, your prayer and you need your support system. You and I talked about, because you, as you know, and a lot of our listeners know now that my mom was diagnosed with terminal cancer and only had six weeks to live. Mm-hmm. And it was so interesting to watch the different people that came out of the came into the trenches with us and we're sitting in the suck as I like to talk about it, um, sitting in the suck with us and walking with us through that really difficult journey. And then other people, they kind of bailed or weren't around. And at the end of the day, I think people most of the time are just doing the best that they can and they don't Mm -hmm. know how to relate or they don't know what to do or, and so I found myself kind of giving a lot of people grace. And I think that's really important for us Mm -hmm. to, to see those things, um, in our lives that sometimes people are just doing the best that they can. And we all have our own 
things that we're dealing with, whether it's children or family or work, um, people Mm -hmm. are doing the best that they can. Watch In Tandem, the new short documentary by One Girl Revolution, which highlights the incredible story of Caitlin Cullen and her restaurant in Milwaukee, The Tandem. The Tandem is more than a restaurant. It's a family, a community that at its height was a bustling restaurant serving food and supporting every single person who walked through its doors in one way or another. If someone needed a job, you got it. Having a bad day and needing a smile or a laugh, the Tandem's got you. Having a rough time and need support, the Tandem isn't just a restaurant, it's your family. They got you. When COVID hit in March 2020, the Tandem stepped up to serve the community in a new way. They stopped selling food to customers and started solely feeding people in need. The Tandem community ended up feeding over 115,000 people during the first year of the pandemic. Absolutely incredible. Get to know Caitlin and the Tandem story in One Girl Revolution's new short documentary, In Tandem. Watch In Tandem today at onegirlrevolution.com or on YouTube. Please watch and share this inspiring story. How did you end up, like you've you've gone through all of this with your own cancer journey, your parents. Mm -hmm. What made you want to start Survivor's Corner? Because I think it's so incredible what you started. What made you want to start that? Was there a spark moment? Yes. So I was already operating a boutique called 49 Rose. And I started that just like, I believe like a month or two prior to getting diagnosed. I had no idea (laughs) that I was getting ready to go into this. And, you know, when the pandemic hit, I was trying to figure out my why with with the boutique, you know, because it gets hard with trying to do shows and things like that when you are hurting from medications and things like that. So I asked God, I said, how can I still get my message out with helping people who are subconscious with the way they look? Because when you have breast cancer, that's a beauty thing, you know, it can affect your appearance. So I already learned how to style myself during the season on. So people didn't know what was going on. I knew how to, I learned how to do my face or as the, the, the kids say, beat your face. I learned how to beat my face. I learned how to do my hair and get wigs and things like that. So you would think that all everything is normal. You wouldn't even know that I've had cancer. And I wanted to be able to offer a service and a community of individuals uh, for the cancer community. So that's what birth Survivor's Corner, because I wanted to offer the styling. I wanted to offer a survivor wear, like what you see behind me, but then it ended up involving it to more. Um, so I have a page of resources for support groups because that was so instrumental in my healing process as well. So having therapy, having my um, uh, prayer and having my support system, but then having a su- support group of individuals who understand what it's like to go through cancer because they they just know like I, I was able to share things with them that I didn't even share with my husband because they could relate. Um, but then it kept evolving that to now where I have this podcast where I give the voices to caregivers, to survivors, and anyone who's connected to the cancer community to be able to share their experiences with cancer because I've noticed how my voice has helped others to uh to to help them in their dark moments, to at least give them another perspective of how to look at things. Because, you know, when you are dealing with so much, it's so easy to be negative about stuff, but to learn how to try to see the light at the end of the tunnel. So that's what Survivor Corner really is. It's just a cancer community that is going to help you with your styling, helping you uh, with inspirational wear, but then also giving you a platform to express your voice, to share your experience, to help your community as well. Community is so important. And I think particularly people that understand what you're going through or what you've been through. And so I think that that's what's so important, so critical about what you're doing because you're bringing people together and helping them feel like they're not alone. Yeah, And just from my own experience with my mom, I just remember when she was diagnosed, when she found out her terminal diagnosis and it just sucks all the air out of the room, but it also sucks the air out of the person, right? Because you just have this moment of hopelessness and you don't know where to go and you're like, I'm dying. Um, And so bringing people together on these different levels of their cancer journey, right? Because I know that you're highlighting people that you know, maybe our stage one and, you know, more treatable cancers. And then also the terminal cancers. I think it's so important to bring people together, build community and, and share stories. Stories are so powerful and have the ability to bring people together and to change the world. Absolutely. 
Can you share a couple of stories? I love stories and this podcast Mm -hmm. obviously is very focused and I would love to hear a couple of stories of people that you've highlighted through Survivor's Corner. Um, Yes, I would like to highlight one of my guests from season one and she was diagnosed with the she was diagnosed with with the right cancer, but the right, the, the wrong form. And she received the wrong treatment. <laughs> like, so I wanted to highlight that because I think it's very important to be an advocate when you are diagnosed with anything. Um, I, to, I, I totally agree that you need to, to rally it with the doctors and to make sure that you're getting it. But it's very important to choose an oncologist or any medical professional that works for you. Just because they have the credentials does not mean that they're a good fit for you. And if they're not, you need to change it. So fortunately for this guest, she was able to uh, advocate for herself in such a way to where she stood in the waiting room for hours with her radiologist and was like, I'm not leaving until you see me. And even though the doctor was annoyed, after he examined her, he immediately started doing more testing and came back in and said, I, we apologize, but you were giving, you were given the wrong chemotherapy drug because we were fighting the wrong type of breast cancer. So that sucks. So chemo is no joke. You know, like you are losing your hair, your nails, and it's really rough on the body. So to know that you went through all of that and to not, uh, for, for no reason that that has to be devastating, but she eventually got the right care and everything has worked out. So that is one of the stories that has resonated with me because it it talks about how you have to listen to your gut and to really fight for yourself. If you, you know what your body feels like, you know what you're going through. If you feel the lump and it's not changing, please make sure you advocate for yourself. Um, they work for you. And you're able to best communicate that. And it's also important to sometimes make sure that you're documenting things too. I'm not always good with that, but make sure that you're documenting. So then when you go to the doctors, you could say, hey, I've been having this issue. This is how you relate with that. Um, I will say another one is one of the guys on the show and how open and transparent he was about his journey because sometimes men doesn't always open up about their situations because, you know, they got to be tough and macho and things like that. And he also opened up about how, you know, your partner can really be influential on, on the healing process and getting things through it. So we have a role with helping them seek help to make sure they go to the doctors by loving on them, by praying with them and just supporting them in their decisions and um, keeping them. So those are like two stories for sure. Uh, is that, and if I give you one more, um, the story of my husband. My husband also has cancer as well. He has uh, skin cancer and he had cancer before me. And to be able to have him on the show and we get to talk about our journeys is memorable because both of us could not be here, right? And so for us to be able to be a living testimony, to still be able to encourage others, that is the greatest blessing of all. So yeah. Yeah. Wow. I can't wait to listen to the episode with your husband. I've listened to some of the episodes of your podcast, but that just seems like it's, it's gotta be very therapeutic for both of you too, to sit Mm -hmm. together and share your story. And I just can't fathom what um, you both are going through, but you are a power team, a power couple. And I know that that's going to resonate through your family, your children watching, you be so strong and empowering others. I think the first story that you shared just about this woman and what she experienced, it's so important for people to ask questions and challenge the system. And I've done that many times throughout my life where it's, we know our bodies better than anyone and to ask questions and challenge the system and, and, try different things, ask questions. It's so important. So you're Mm -hmm. empowering people and empowering other people that are going through a difficult time to ask those questions and challenge what's going on and, um, do what's best for them, which is so important. It is. So you also have written two books. I want to talk about that because, you know, you've shared so openly your story, your journey, what made you want to write 
these books and what can you tell me about them? Yes. So my debut book, Walk Through Fire, is really about walking through fire, dealing with <clears throat> all of the uh, adversities that was coming my way. Um, going back to that spiritual amnesia thing, uh, I watched a document on TV. I was having a what they call a down day. And a down day of having chemo is feeling like you have the flu and things like that. So after you have your infusion, in a few days, you have what they call your down day where you're really sick. And during that down day, it was a, a TV program that was on talking about breast cancer, <laughs> like go figure. And it wasn't even October. And they were talking about how uh, Caucasians are typically diagnosed with the disease more, but African-Americans are dying more. And that light bulb went off and was like, I need to be an advocate for all women, but definitely for the African-American community because the the age of getting your routine mammogram is 40. Again, I was 34. If I waited till 40, I, would not be, <laughs> I wouldn't be talking to you. So I was like, you know, I wanted to really have a, a, a body of work to sh talk about my journey because some people are scared to have cancer and, and, and it's a, a very valid feeling. But then I wanted to show that you can have cancer and then that you can beat it. Even if you're at a stage three, even if you're at a stage four, you could, you could continue to have um, a, a good life even after the diagnosis. So I wanted to, I had put devotionals in there to uh, give you inspirations of hope and things like that. And then my parents' stories just started to go in there as well. So I have not only my story, my father's story, but then my mother's story that's in there. And again, along the way, just really just um, honing in on the message about, you know, there's light at the end of the tunnel. And then in between um, my first book and to my latest book, I am a co-author with 80 other women that has inspirational quotes with that. That's called I'm speaking. And then this new book um, that just, that was just released. I wrote last year in just over 30 days. That's all it took me to do. And I wanted to get a health guide uh, for those who are in post-treatment. That means that you're done with chemotherapy. You're done with radiation and surgeries. You're now on either um, hormone drugs, such as like tamoxifen or, you're just totally done. And to me, that period is almost worse than active treatment because I personally had to deal with uh, my new normal. Um, you, sometimes your hair grows back different from the when it was prior to chemo or the way how your body acts. Um, I've got asthma since uh, being diagnosed with cancer. So dealing with new ailments, dealing with the change of doctors, I had to change doctors. So I wanted to capture a guide that talks about the transition period from going from active treatment over to post-treatment because there's so many books that helps encourage a survivor in the beginning stages, but there's not a lot in the last stages. So I created this guide to talk about my experiences and to encourage you in certain topics, but then also give you some reflection to where it's asking you a question and for you to document so then you can get the holistic ap approach with everything. So you're dealing with your spiritual, your mental, and your physical well-being with everything. So that's called surviving the cancer journey. Um, so I want So I got something for the beginning for you. And I also got something for the end for you. It's a holistic approach, right? Which is so yeah. important in this day and age. I think that we need to be thinking about the whole person and all the things that you're going through. And it's not just about cancer. It's about anything that you're possibly walking through because we all face difficulties and we all can face um, struggles in life. And so actually just kind of pulling you out of that and looking at the whole person, mm -hmm. um, like you mentioned, you know, we just came through suicide prevention month and mental health health um, month. And it's so important for us to be focusing on mental wellness and all the different things that you're experiencing. And then you look at the cancer journey. And I think a lot of things it's mind over matter too. If yes. you believe that you can get through, if you believe that, and that's not to say there are certain things that are untreatable. I know that my mom's cancer was completely untreatable and we tried a lot of things, but didn't work. But a lot of times that mind over matter, if you believe that you can do it and you're actually doing some sort of activity, which I think is so cool about your second book, where you're actually going through and thinking through different things and journaling. And, yeah. um, it's challenging you to think about the whole person, which is great. Yes. Absolutely. 
what's some of the feedback that you've gotten from people? I know that you've spoken so much. You've gotten, um, you know, you have these books out and people have heard your story. Obviously through the podcast, people have heard so many other stories of people um, that have come through so much. What's some of the feedback that you've gotten from people? I'm always curious. What One in particular, she is a retired nurse. She said that after reading your book, if I was to go through cancer, you have given me the will to fight. That resonated with me because she wasn't like, if she was ever diagnosed, she just wasn't going to fight. She's like, I see what chemo does to individuals and the way how you handled it. Because again, my church family didn't know until after I finished chemotherapy. Um, I am a singer as well. So I kept singing through the whole time. It was only one time that I did not attend church service. And that was New Year's Eve service. I was there that morning, but I couldn't do the evening service because I ended up getting the flu. So it was crazy. And to have the flu during chemo is just really bad. It's already bad enough to get the flu, but it was even worse to do it while getting active uh, chemo. Um, So that resonated with me. But then others just said, you know what? If you were able to handle cancer, if you were able to handle the death of your dad, if you were able to handle the death of your mom and to still be transparent and to still put a smile on your face, even though I know there's tears, you have given me to will to continue to fight and to know that I can make it. So even if I lost my job, even if my kids are going astray, even if I myself am going through cancer, you have given me the hope to move on. And that has humbled me and has honored me. And it's given me purpose and put everything in, into perspective of why I think I went through cancer. Because early I spoke about, you know, getting us at 34 and not having the gene nor the, uh, um, the family history, I just could not understand why. And I asked God, I was like, okay, God, why are you giving me this? This is a little weird. Not saying that I'm special enough that I shouldn't have had cancer, but it just didn't make sense. Like, you know, if you have a family history, you're preparing for those different things. Or if you have the gene, it makes sense. But this is just totally random. And I'm under 40. What is that? But, you know, sometimes you have to go through certain things to peel the layers back to then realign you with your purpose. I am reminded of, um, you know, I, I'm celebrating 21 years since being out of high school. And I was looking at uh, this uh, photo book that we have because we're getting ready to have a reunion this Saturday. And in that, I put that I wanted to motivate people. And as time went on, I moved away from that. I was doing it in a different way. Of course, yes, I'm motivating my staff and stuff like that. But I don't think that I was aligned with what I was supposed to be doing cancer put me back in line and what I was supposed to be doing and how I'm supposed to be doing it. So it's just now a full circle moment. So back at 18, when I saw that I wanted to motivate people, I am now doing that at 39. Yeah, you are such a beacon of light. And I was going to ask you what's at the root, what's the driving force of why you do what you do every single day. But I think that that must be it, that you know, you hear these stories from people and mm-hmm. you've been through so much and you're such an example and a beacon to other people that you can come through everything. So many things piled on your plate. And I'm sure that there were moments where it just felt like you couldn't even breathe because there was so much piled yeah. on top of you, but you did it and you kept going. And I think that other people can see that and they're so inspired by it. I know that I am. Thank you. I, I think also that, you know, people resonate with stories. You can tell someone, hey, I want you to make it. But then when they know your story and then you unpack that story, it resonates. And that's what invokes change. That's why certain keynote speakers are able to move you because they put you on this journey. You're able to visualize yourself in that particular moment that if that was you, this is how, these are the steps that you can get that versus someone who just comes up there with the, I call them the dry eyes guy. It's just monotone with, hey, this is what you need to do. it. here's a three point outline of how you need to do this. But when you have someone in front of you who is able to give you either a personal story or just to create a story. Storytelling is so powerful. And um, I think that's something that I'm continuing to uh, 
developed to make sure my storytelling is resonating in the hearts to provoke change, to allow you to uh, achieve whatever goals that it is, if it's in business or if it's in your personal life and health and so forth. Authenticity is so rare in the world. And I think that that is one thing that just really resonates with people when they see someone authentically sharing their story. And that's what this podcast is all about. And that's the embodiment of who you are. You're just so authentic and beautiful. And it's such a gift to get to spend time with you and get to know more about your story. So I know that you are a woman of big hopes and dreams. Where do you go from here? What are some things that you're working on your family? Tell me about your life now. And what are some things that you're excited about that are coming up? I'm excited to eventually say I'm not going to be a solopreneur. Okay, so as a solopreneur, you are IT, you are marketing, you are the advertiser, you are the creator, you're doing everything. But you know, if you are good at everything, you won't be great at some. So I want to be able to eventually have a team to be able to uh, take care of some of the things so that I'm able to do more impact work, to be able to go out and do different speaking engagements and have my reach a little bit further because it's limited as of now. But I know that it's going to continue to grow because uh, my base is growing and I'm excited for what's to come. So I'm speaking it into the atmosphere that it shall happen. And I'm speaking to the entrepreneur who's also a solopreneur. Don't give up. This pandemic has taught us that you have to learn how to pivot uh, and you have to learn how to adjust. And adjusting is not necessarily a bad thing. Things evolve over time. We've evolved from having the flip phone. Even one of the models did kind of come back. But you get my drift that things evolve over time that, you know, at first when we had cell phones, they were really big. Then they went through really small period. And then now they're starting to get back big again. So you have to always learn how to adjust. You can't always do the same song and dance. Continue to evolve, continue to move forward and it shall happen. Well, you're just moving forward and I can't wait to see where you go from here. How can people get involved in what you're doing and how can they, how can people support what you're doing? I know they obviously can subscribe to your podcast, check Mm -hmm. that out, follow you on social media, but what are some ways that people can support your work and continue to follow you? Uh, One of the ways that people could support is by donating me. I have a a GoFundMe page to be able to impact survivors' lives. So one of the things that I do on my website is there's a donate page. So for every shirt that's sold, I'm donating it to um, the hospitals of someone who's going through active treatment. Um, But then it's just also just allowing us to have um, more inventory. I have about 10 designs. I've only have, I think, three or four designs that's released of now, but I have 10 that's already done. So investing in that is going to increase all the different inspirational shirts that not only a survivor, but a caregiver, again, anyone in the cancer community um, is able to do. So that's one way to support. Obviously, by um, sharing one of the books, if you know someone who's going through cancer, have them read my first book. If they are transitioning out of cancer, read my book. If you're a business owner, you still need to read my book, even though it's about cancer. It's the same key principles still apply about going through adversity. So really, anyone can really resonate with what I'm saying in both of those books, because you got to know how to deal with something when something has changed and you got to know how to deal with something when you're going through it. Have you subscribed to the One Girl Revolution podcast? We have new episodes coming out every week and you don't want to miss them. Subscribe to the One Girl Revolution podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, or wherever you're listening right now. I will be sure to post the link um, to your website, but also all the links to the GoFundMe, your books, so people can get involved and also your social media. So I always say the easiest way or the free way that you can support anybody and their work is to follow them on social media, share everything that they're doing. And I know that so many people who are listening are going to want to follow your journey and continue to support you. And they obviously can invite you to speak too, all over the country. I know that you would love to share your story. So if anybody's listening and and wants to host you, um, that's another way that they can support getting your story out there and encouraging other stories out there. Absolutely. I do that as well. 
So yeah, follow me. Um, one of the things that I'm doing on social media right now, every October, I try to do a, a highlight on Breast Cancer Awareness Month, but not just the normal statistics that you will see about, you know, every 29 seconds in the world, someone is diagnosed with breast cancer. I'm giving you a real behind the scenes look at the lens of a survivor. So letting you know what it's like to lose your nail beds, what it's like to deal with the mental side of things that not necessarily always a pretty things or even what it's like to be a caregiver. Cause I have, unfortunately, I know both. I know what it's like to be a survivor and a caregiver. So um, if you follow my journey each day, I'm posting something um, on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook on, um, you know, just the, the breast cancer journey and, and what that looks like to an actual survivor. Kimberly, what advice would you give to someone who is maybe on the cancer journey right now or, or they're just struggling with something? They're going through a dark chapter in their life. What advice or what would you say to someone who's struggling right now? I would say that they need to have faith the size of a mustard seed. And if you ever saw a mustard seed, it's this small. That's all you need to have faith. It. I think mental health and physical health go hand in hand. Um, Bible talks about as a man thinks, so is he. So you want to make sure that you are staying positive as much as you can. It's sometimes it's really hard to be positive when everything around you is negative. But if you change your mindset, that gives you a fighting chance to move on. Even when my mother was dying, she still glorified God in the midst of her pain. She still uh, praised him and she still, you know, with, you know, hoped, still had hope. There's nothing wrong with having hope. So even if you don't get the desired results that you're looking for, having that hope will sustain you because ask yourself, what is the, what, what good is it going to come from being negative, but stress and weight and getting checked out faster. Nothing ever comes good from being negative. There's always good coming from the light. And there's a, a sense of accomplishment when you finally do that. Just think of the birthing process. It is painful when you are going through child labor. and But when you push out that gift, it makes it all worth it. So you may not understand why you're going through what you're going through, but just have that faith and keep that positivity amongst you. And if you're having one of those days, because listen, we're all human. We have flesh moments. Find your support system to uplift you during those times. What about for people like all of us who are listening, yeah. who know somebody who is going through cancer right now, or we know a caregiver, maybe mm -hmm. our friend's parent is going through cancer right now. What would you say to them? What can we all do to support people in through their cancer journey, including those caregivers? Yes. Biggest thing I would say is listen, listen to the survivor. And then refocus them if they are starting to, to go uh, astray with the negative thought. The reason why I say listen, because anytime, like, okay, if, if I was to say I had a cold, I, I want to say the natural response that we all do is, hey, have you took cold medicine? Have you did this? Have you did? We offer all this advice all the time. It's just natural for us, even though we may have been through or we may not have been through it. And sometimes a survivor doesn't want to hear that. They just want you to be able to listen, <clears throat> to hear their cries, to hear their concerns, and sometimes to be able to do the little things. I myself don't like to uh, ask for help all the time. So cooking a meal, just doing it. Hey, I got dinner tonight for you. Hey, I'm going to drive you to your appointment today so you don't have to worry about that. Hey, here's $50 for gas money because I know you got to go through um, all of your treatments and things like that. Doing those things, oh, I'm going to clean your house for you. Like just doing those things really goes a long way. So listening, providing resources for them. Um, and again, just giving them encouragement. Those are, I would say, the three biggest things that you can give. And some of them are free. If you don't have the, the, the resources to be able to, to give money and things like that, 
giving your time, sitting them with them, just watching TV with them to make sure that they don't feel that they're alone, especially if they're terminal. Um, they already have to digest what's getting ready to come. So helping them feel comfortable, give you know, making them laugh. You know that laughter is good for the soul. Don't discredit how powerful just laughing is. And it will actually be therapeutic for the caregiver as well because it's painful to watch someone um, slip away. It is hard watching someone take their last breath. It's hard doing all of that. So to be able to make them laugh, to be able to reflect on the memories, to, re to record those moments so then you can look back at it, irregardless if they ended up making it or not, you have those memories to look back on and say, wow, I was there for that individual. And you have that peace within you to know that you made them feel loved. Somebody said to me yesterday, act, don't ask. And I think a lot of times yes. we ask what someone needs or say, hey, let me know what you need. And it can be so suffocating in these mm -hmm. moments where life is already pounding on top of you. And so actually just acting and it can be as simple, like you said, it can be something big where you're giving them a gift card for meals or mm -hmm. having food delivered or delivering food to them or even something as simple as cards. I know my mom loved any little card mm -hmm. that she got and she would have us read it and she'd read it, you know, over and over again. And those little things, we don't want to discount the little things that we can do. Yeah. Text somebody, um, sending them little messages just to let them know that you're mm -hmm. thinking of them, um, because it can feel so isolating going through cancer and also those caregivers too. I think it's so important for us to highlight them and, and look out for them as well. Yes. I want to add one thing before we go to, I think this is uh, relevant for both the survivor as well as um, the survivor's community, the caregivers and everyone um, with knowing that there's a thing called survivor's guilt. When you survive cancer with me being the only survivor out of the other two of my parents, I've asked why me, why am I spared? And I know for a caregiver, they may ask why them, why are they going through this? Or why isn't it not me that you're giving me the cancer and you try to shift it? I want to free both a survivor and a caregiver that don't carry that, that, that burden with you. You, the, the, there's no rhyme or reason why life happens. You know, someone says life be life and it's going to happen. Life is going to happen. So don't carry that, that, that burden of, I, I'm not worthy enough to survive that I'm supposed to be dying. I'm, I should just already take myself out so I'm not going to get treatment. No, stop all of that. And for the caregiver, don't beat yourself up if you felt like maybe I should have took them to this doctor and not this doctor or this. Stop beating yourself up. Everything happened the way it was supposed to. We may not understand it. And in the Bible it talks about, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Sometimes we don't understand why God has certain things that he does, um, but we will we'll understand it by and by eventually. So I just want to encourage a survivor and a caregiver to not carry that survivor's guilt burden. And sometimes it's going to rise up time and time again. You might, you, you might have it good one day and another day it might flare up, but just remember that you are worthy and then you, you matter and your loved ones matter and what you had offered them and what you're doing is enough. Kimberly, your story and your passion and your love, it just resonates through. And I'm just so grateful to have spent this time with you. And I'm so excited to stay in touch with you and follow everything that you're doing. And we want to support you in any way that we can. So I'll be sharing all of your social media and your books and everything. And I just want to encourage everybody to follow you. But before I let you go, I always end this podcast on one question. And so mm -hmm. I'd like to ask you, if you could leave women and girls around the world with one message, what would it be? You are enough. You are enough. It doesn't matter if we don't always get paid the same. It doesn't matter that we get overlooked by others at times. You know what you have and set a goal and then just do it. Like I self-published this book. I didn't know I could self-publish. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I've been amazed with my journey with what I'm able to do. Put your mind to something, research it. Listen, YouTube, honey, is free. 
Look at all that stuff. They got stuff you can figure out. How to, look, you can learn how to cook. You can learn how to do makeup. You can, Whatever trade that you want to get into, YouTube is a great resource that you don't necessarily have to pay a coach for. I will suggest getting a coach, but start with YouTube. But just know that you are enough. You have the tools to make it. And you are a game changer. We run the world. We do run the world and we need <laughs> more women and girls to share their stories. And just like you, I think we have all been through something or we're going to go through something in our life. And when we have the courage to stand up and share our stories, it encourages and empowers other people to share their stories. But Kimberly, I'm so grateful for you. I'm so grateful to have you on the podcast. Thank you so much for being on and thank you for all the incredible work that you do. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at One Girl Revo. That's the number one girl R E V O. And you can find more information on One Girl Revolution at OneGirlRevolution.com. That's the number one girl revolution.com. <laughs>